Sorry. Go on. No, just, yeah, we're not going to see a lot of uh, split the map in half, super long macro style stuff, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, we could, but it'll just be off the back of something super aggressive, right? Yeah. It's going to start out with that, at least. Thanks so much to everyone for tuning in today, and big thanks to Afrika for sponsoring these tournaments. It's pretty sweet to get to do StarCraft two tournament of this caliber every two weeks. I concur wholeheartedly. Really fun. Mm -hmm. Look forward to these all the time. All right, the Reapers are on the way. Masa, because he doesn't like dying, has gone double gas into factory. However, he has an SCV scouted, so he kind of likes to live on the edge. We'll see where he sends his Reaper. If Future gets the jump on him or not, this could just be a GG. Seeing as how Masa has an SCV scouted, like, this is actually so, so risky for a Masa. Like, he moves his Reaper out, maybe checking for a proxy there, but it's actually there. And now Future's like, what's up? I got two Reapers. Okay. Masa's Reaper doesn't get caught, which is pretty much like the auto-lose for a proxy two racks in TVT. Uh, he's already lost a few SCVs though, but uh, Future trying to pursue Moss's Reaper. Looks like he will lose his own Reaper though. Does he target down Moss's? Yes, he does. However, yes. at the expense of one of his, uh, two of his own Reapers. So two for one, and then a couple SCVs. Looks like Moss is going to hold this. Okay. Masa slightly in the lead. He's got a quicker starport, quicker CC. Future, though, of course, not dead yet. You always have a way to come back in a TVT, and the openings, even after like a failed proxy, tends to even out a little bit. Future gonna float over one barracks. This is something that I like to do when I proxy. Uh, Float it right up there. As it can give you basically just the high ground vision. And then if your opponent doesn't say commit to a bunch of Hellions or Reapers, then you can poke with your own Reapers. However, Future sees the amount of Hellions and Reapers that Masa has made and is gonna probably keep his Reapers back at home. Yeah, Barracks of Future is just scouting around, trying to see what's up. Nothing too crazy. Did he spot... Oh, he doesn't see that starport up in the top left. No. I mean, you you got to assume, though, there's going to be a starport, though. I guess. So it could just tip him off into thinking it's a proxy or whatever. Future, though, doing the normal follow-up. You get the Cyclones. Getting a Raven to defend versus a potential Banshee. Look at this. Future actually has a worker lead. He's got his base pretty much on location the same time as Masa. He's a little bit behind on army supply, but TVT is wild with how it just evens out after this. Yeah, a lot of chaos can happen in the first couple minutes, but then it's like, eh, you know what? We have the same number of workers. Masa's army is a little bit bigger, but as long as it's over on this side of the map, it doesn't matter. Banshees get four SCVs, five SCVs in total, but does get picked there we off. Go. That's a nice bit of damage. Uh, I feel if Future was maybe in a bit of a better position, he could have got that going. And oh, Future, misclick with the SCV on his CC. Oh, that is a big one. That is actually a huge misclick for Future. Oh, I hope he fixes this soon for his sake. Okay, there we go, he gets it going, but little bit of time lost. In StarCraft, every second matters. 
Really does. Being late on something can be all the difference in the world. Which makes it unforgiving, especially at the higher levels. But that's why I think people are attracted to it is something that's hard to master just really keeps people playing for a long time. Oh, yeah. Chasing that perfection that maybe you'll never get. <laughs> Trust me, at StarCraft, you'll never get it. Yeah. Like, uh, that that is one of the beautiful things about this game, how you can just be trying to... Trying to get better and better. You never have to worry about getting bored of StarCraft or feeling like a sense of completion with StarCraft. If if you play like, say like, I don't know, some game like say, I don't know, Fallout or Skyrim, it'll take a long time to get bored of. Like you can play those games for hundreds of hours, but you will eventually get bored of them. StarCraft? Nope. If you like competition. Yeah, not in my experience. Oh, the Hellions for Future run into masses. That nice. is a disaster. Oh. Trap. Trap. Great trap. trap. Success. That third base by Masa. Landon, that's going to be really nice. But there's an army coming up to So can you hold is going to be the question. Yeah, this is quite aggressive from Future. He's got three tanks with his multiple Ravens. He can pressure this command center a little bit. However, he doesn't have any Vikings, so he's got to be careful. He's actually just going to spam down all of his auto turrets. He's not pushing in with those auto turrets, though, so he's just giving up his Ravens essentially for free. But he actually gets the command center. Oh, huge mistake Ooh. by Masa not lifting that. Not even a cancel. That's brutal. These Future. Vikings versus tanks play. Doesn't Dang. unsiege his tanks either there because he knew that Masa was going to jump on them, so he at least gets one or two shots off. It's going to be a tough hold, though. Whatever's coming his way next. Man, it's 42 to 25 army supply right now. That is such a big advantage for Masa. There's a handful of marines and a tank here for future right now. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, just There's just more stuff here for the Blue Terran player. He's got two tanks to the one. Defender's advantage is going to kick in. Yeah, Future's only 20 seconds oh. out from Stim and Combat Shield, though. Look at that positioning. That's really good stuff right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly not sweating this too much for Future. Look at this. He's got Combat Shield, so he's going to have that going for him. Masa, does he have Stim Pack? He should. No, he... Okay, now he does. Just He's finished, also going to yeah. have combat shield soon, but future he takes a fight uh, without SCVs though this early on. I feel as if waiting would have been better for him if he possibly could have. Interference matrix on that tank it does get taken down while it's interfered Masa's with. Got, or future, you got to repair your CC, buddy. You don't uh -uh, want to pull a Masa. Gone. Oh, oh wait, no, the repair. Wow. Oh, repair is good unit. That is a big deal. Liberator comes in for Masa though. He's going to land the Vikings on the tank. And that yeah. is just flexing right there. I guess Masa has had enough to close this one out. Future focuses down the Raven. There's still the Liberator in the sky, though, being a pain. He just needs to keep making as many Marines as he can before Masa reinforces this. Once Masa reinforces this and gets completely dug in, it will just be lights out for Future. Sixty-seven to fifty workers is just brutal. Future running into that siege tank, he's just getting pulled apart now. Looks like a great game here from Masa. Yeah, that base staying alive is massive for future. He loses that. He oh, a Liberator in the main base, too. Just wrecking Marines. SCVs keep running into the circle, too. Oh, future. Marines decide forward. to leave it. Yeah. GG. Masa takes game number one. Woo.
Such aggression everywhere. Loving it. Mm -hmm. Pretty good hold on the other end, too. I did lose that base, in fairness, but... I was able to recover from that quite nicely and just continue making... Again, continue making workers. Mm. Even while he was under attack. Massive. Massively impressive stuff. Somnicron and Falcon Paladin both chipping in $10 to the Macharino. Thanks, Somnicron. Mm -hmm. You guys are the best doing that. Right now, these players fighting for the lion's share of that money. Mm hmm. Wow, that was an action-packed game number one. Very excited to see what we get here in game number two between these two North American players. Both of them just getting better all the time. Future especially seems to be on a nice trajectory to be able to you know, continue to challenge to be one of the better Terran players. Mm -hmm. Especially in the Western Hemisphere. Yeah, in the Western Hemisphere... Uh, I guess there's special Masa Future? That order? I think so. Oh. Are we forgetting people? No, I'm just very unprofessional and left my Steam open. Ah. There we go. So we're going to be on Golden Wall next match between these two players. Masa rolling with the Mia Han. Is it Mia? Yeah, I think it's Mia. Mira? Mira Han. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Hello there, Matthew. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Shoot you in the face, Matthew. <laughs> but it's only because I care. Yeah, there you go. That's their relationship. <laughs> Poor Matthew. How'd he get involved, honestly? Uh, yeah, such a nice boy. It's a nice boy. All right, here we are. He's down 0 to 1, but it's a best of 7, so he can always come back. It's future. And in the bottom left, looking good after game one. Masa. Mm hmm. Social distancing player here, throwing out the good look, have fun. Mm -hmm. Nobody proxying this time around. We're gonna just play it straight up. Yeah, the players were talking about how it's a bad map for proxy two racks. Interesting. So they didn't want to see play a it. proxy in TVZ. Yes, I think he meant two racks like Reaper. Which I'd agree, just from looking at it, it is. Like, you can only get up this tiny ramp maybe there, and then getting into the main is just as fr unfriendly. All right. Looks like a Reaper ex Wait, a Marine expand for Masa. Or for future, pardon me. Well, Moss has gone double gas. Mm. It's kind of banana. Kind of bananas. Who goes for a marine expand? Maybe he forgot what the matchup was. Maybe. I mean... I have... Uh, I've, I play uh, Protoss and Terran. And it's great. Because sometimes I'll queue up as Protoss and sometimes I'll queue up as Terran on the same account. And then I'll meet the same player twice. And then they'll think I'm the same race, but I'm a different one. <laughs> tricky. Tricky, tricky, Nikki. I don't even try to be tricky. All right, 
Reapers and Hellions crossing the map. Future has his own Hellions on the way, though. He's got his Marine or two. His CC will finish up in time. Copenhagen Doss with the bold prediction in chat saying Future 4 2 Masa. Future will adapt and sweep three in a row to win after a W here and an L next. That is a very specific prediction. I say. Bring it on. I, I wouldn't doubt it. Like, sometimes Masa doesn't play completely up to form, and sometimes Future plays on fire. I think this will be like a. If I. I'd, I'd have to say a 4 3 for Masa, honestly. Oh, are we doing predictions? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's a TVG prediction, too. I know. It's ridiculous. Who made us do this? Copenhagen Doss? Yes. Yes. Bad. Of course. Troublemaker. Uh, yeah. In that case, what did you say? I said 4 3 for Masa. Oh. Usually I'd go with something more radical, but. I don't know. By the way, Future's going for Hellbats. Who is he? I kind of like the 4-2 Masa here. <laughs> Based on whatever the crap Future is doing in this game. Yeah, I mean, Masa has a wall on the high ground, so Hellbats aren't going to do anything, buddy. Then there's there a Banshee heading anyway. to his main. Oh, no. Oh, no. Nothing. Could... There's a Viking on the way, but... Future is just dead. Like, this is honestly... Is he a dead nerd? Yeah, he's a dead nerd. I mean... Eh, he'll have a Viking out to deal with the Banshee, and he does have double CC where he cancelled Mosses. So, um, mm. is he really that dead of a nerd? No. Or is he kind of like a nerd who's hanging on? Eh... That burns a stand. <laughs> he's making a raven. Raven, good unit. Ravens also take a year to build. Yeah. Feels a lot longer when there's a banshee killing your workers too. That's and then 16. another one shows up. Yeah. Uh, uh, That's it. Rip. I mean, tap yeah. out. No. Tap out. GG. But detection. Yeah, he's already killed 22 workers though. Three SCVs. Masa has double the economy, but two orbital commands is a lot of orbital commands at this stage. That's why Masa's building three. Smart. 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 Is Jinro back from the army yet? I think if Jinro was going to be back from the army, he'd have been... Like, I don't even really know who Jinro is, to be honest. He was an old StarCraft player, right? Yeah, Brood War player from Sweden. Oh, from Sweden? Yeah. And he went to the army? Apparently. Talking about Jinro. That's what he said in chat. Yeah. He moved to Korea in 2010. He set up a programming house there. Uh, I don't know. We're we talking about somebody else here. Yeah, I get the feeling that he meant someone else, maybe. Banshee gets another mm. four workers. Holy cow! WJD with the spam in chat. I don't know what he's saying. He yeah, Jinro made round of four as a foreigner, didn't he? And that was a big deal, or whatever. Yeah, for sure. I don't think he went to the military. I think he's just old. <laughs> yeah, probably. He's not playing StarCraft anymore. Who knows? Maybe now he is because he's quarantined. Oh, this is absolutely hmm. horrendous for future. I admire the fighting spirit. Oh! Dead Raven. GG. Yeah. GG Masa with the 2 0 lead so far. That is a pretty intimidating lead in a best of seven laughing games. It is. It's one more from being very unlikely to recover. It certainly is.
Not impossible, mind you. It Just blows Dovenhagen Das's prediction out of the water, though. The 4 2? Yeah. Copenhagen Doss, yeah, he predicted a future win, like 4 2 or whatever. Ah. But ah. that future would win that map. That's a problem. That's a problem, Copenhagen Doss. Moss is looking good. Future's doing weird stuff. In fairness, it's TBT. It's very janky. But yeah, when a Cloak Banshee shows up and you have nothing that can shoot up and nothing can detect, you're just going to have a bad... Use that Matcherino code, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. AW56. Feature also saying that every time he's done that build in the tournament, it got hard countered. Hmm. It's called well. using a 2017 build, says Masa. <laughs> and I honestly think that that's right. If your build gets hard countered frequently, it's time to pick a new build. Like maybe put it away. Yeah, put it on the shelf where it belongs. And maybe there's a different balance change in the future, but it's dead. <laughs> That'll affect a TVT build? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe Banshees will get a buff and it'll get even more hard countered. Sure. Maybe Hellbats get better. I dig it. Give us blue flame on an armory so we can make blue flame hellbats without having to build a tech lab for our That factory. is... Then we can go bio hellbat. Oh my gosh. That scares me as a human <laughs> being. Shouldn't have given you ideas. What am I doing? <laughs> All right. In the top right... It's future, a.k.a. social distancing. And in the bottom left, he's Canadian. He's Masa. Gnoi says, was future even playing in 2017? Was he even born in 2017? Ha! <laughs> yes. <laughs> but just barely. He was a lot better at StarCraft than me in 2017, I'm pretty sure. Mm, yes. <laughs> it's great to see we've been over 200 viewers for this event. Thanks so much to everyone for tuning in. For yeah, that's awesome. a time-adjusted last-minute event, Guys are all very cool. Yes, the coolest. Cooler than Jinro. And Innovations Games will hopefully be in two weeks' time if the schedule permits. Very good. Bunker on the way here for Masa. Immediately makes me a big, big fan. You gotta build a bunker. Always been a fan. It's very rare these days which you see a Terran like overreact and build too many bunkers. <laughs> in the in the past, a, a Terran would like maybe sniff like an all in and build like four bunkers, and you'd be like, "Oh, that's way too much." But not anymore. They figured it out. Yeah, ASL and GSL English streams on this platform peak around 200 viewers. I know GSL is also on YouTube, though, but is ASL also on YouTube, or is it still on Twitch? I don't know what they did with ASL. Good question. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Because it's at an ungodly hour in the morning for us. That's a good point. Cyclone on the way for future. He's getting up his CC. I mean, the players went about it a different way, but they will arrive at a similar spot. Some different paths, that's all. Different walks of life. All right. 
GSL is 2 a.m. my time and ASL 4 a.m. Yeah, GSL is sometimes like, I don't know, uh, like 1 or 2 a.m., but then they do like the Friday night GSL, which is awesome. Except we have daylight savings time, so every six months, StarCraft's either a little bit earlier in Korea for us or a little bit later. Right. And it's really frustrating when you're an event organizer. It's like, right, I get to wake up an hour early. Abolish daylight savings time. That is all. I, su I support abolishing daylight savings time. Okay, so future going for a better build this game. However, it looks like it's either going to be mech or a tank push from future. Interesting. I haven't seen mech in a TBT in a while. I feel like it used to be more viable. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It definitely still has its place. It's just still incredibly frustrating to play in TVT. Play against in TVT, I mean, because it puts you on a timer akin to other late game compositions. Right. And then you're like, well, I can either try and cheese you, which will most likely fail because mech's really good defensively, or I can push on, or I can just macro up, but I know then the game's going to go 40 minutes. <laughs> and I, don't, I only want queued up to play one or two ladder games. So, no thank you. Mm -hmm. And Future is pushing with this higher Viking count he's making, but Masa also making many Vikings. He's already got two Ravens. Yeah, this attack from Future is not going to get anything done, but he throws his third CC on location. Although Amasa is actually going into... What's he got? Three racks. Future, just on the one barracks for now. So, a little bit of build variation there. Ooh, nice. Nice move there from Masa getting shots down on this tank. Looks like he will lose his own tank, though, so tank for tank. Looks like Masa also lost a Raven quite painful. But Masa does have the high ground. He does, and the high ground is worth its weight in gold. Both in Star Wars and in StarCraft. Makes sense. Yes, in the stars. High ground is everything. Mm -hmm. Unless you're Darth Maul, in which case it doesn't matter. Yep. In which case you just become an ankle biter. Yeah. They give him spider legs in Clone Wars, though. Oh, I like love he's... I love the Clone Wars. Have you Good watched stuff. any of the new stuff? No, but I should. Yeah, I'm kind of waiting for it all to be released, and then I will. I want I want to rewatch all the Clone Wars. It might be my favorite, just like Star Wars thing. Oh, it's Clone Wars. Like it's so good. It's really good. I think it has like the best writing of anything Star Wars in the whole oh, yeah. world. Yeah, the best Star Wars writer is Dave Filoni. Yeah. Yeah, and he just he's done amazing like world building with the Clone Wars. I just wish there was more of it in the Star Wars land. Yeah, me too. I don't really oh, wow. care about a lot of the new stuff or whatever. Honestly, there's way more potential in like the prequels and stuff, I think. Mm. I know I know they get their flack. And rightfully so, to some extent. You ever watch uh, Star Wars Rebels? Uh, no. And for a dumb reason. I hate the skinny, thin lightsabers they use. I mean, it is pretty silly how they went and changed that up, right? It's like, look, man, it's not a strand of spaghetti we're fighting with here. It's a lightsaber. Help us out. <laughs> this isn't uh, Spaceballs. <laughs> right. Right. Not even close. 
Like, I've, I, I heard the stories are really good. And, I like, mean, I understand that, like, the characters are pretty good, but, like, jeez. It's not as good as the Clone Wars, but it's got, like, one or two really good episodes. Like, just watch Twilight of the Apprentice. That's all. Is that the one where Ahsoka good. comes back? Yeah, it's the one where Ahsoka fights Darth Vader. Uh, and it's, like, so the greatest good. thing imaginable. Yeah. So, so good. She's going to be on The Mandalorian. They're bringing her back for yeah, that. Yeah, they cast... What's her name? Ro Rosario Dawson. Rosario yeah. Dawson. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Ahsoka's one of my favorite Star Wars characters. I'm, j I'm just curious to see how well they do the makeup or whatever. Yeah, I think they'll nail it. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know if it's going to get me to watch The Mandalorian. Yeah, I watched season one. It was all right. Yeah, I turned it off as soon as that robot started murdering, like, 40 people. IG-77, whatever it was. Yeah, that, like, assassin yeah. robot. I was like, well, if a robot can just kill everyone, does anything really have the stakes? But it didn't... No, they got pinned down. Yeah, like, but that happened, still, but then they were going to die. Yeah, but still, it just... It was like two... Get, a guy and a robot just murdered, like, 40 people straight up. <laughs> <laughs> and Masa wins, by the way. By the way, things were happening. Uh... <laughs> what was that GG? What are we looking at here? Let's see. Worker's active. Masa was down and worker's active. The push was just too good. Army value. Masa had a little more army, but... Yeah, Future couldn't stop the push. He had tanks on his door. All right. Happens, I guess. Dogtag93 says a wild Billy appears. Wild Billy. Who's Billy? It's a Billy. Everyone's a Billy. You're a Billy, I'm a Billy. We're all Billies. Decaps86 says that the writing for uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2 is amazing. Anyone deconstructed the canon like he did. I don't think I played KOTOR 2. I played KOTOR, which is really yeah, good. I've never played any of those games. I've heard they're really good. KOTOR's really good. It's a good story. Yeah, I believe it. I like uh, like the old Republic and mm -hmm. prequels and everything. All right, let's get everyone on into the lobby. Okay. Going to be on Nightshade here. Nightshade, a good map. I like Nightshade. As far as macro maps go, or big maps go, I think it's pretty decent. Agreed. So purple. So here's an interesting story that has popped up on my Twitter. Okay, let's hear it. Apparently, 63 bags of food that were donated to Utah food banks contained THC-infused candy. <sighs> That's horrible, but at the same time... I mean... Well, two, How does two, that two, happen? Somebody donates THC infused candy to the food bank? Like, was it like, and how many bags? Uh, 63. Are we talking That's like not an big accident. bags? I don't know. Or little bags? Is, is recreational marijuana legal in Utah? Nope, certainly not. Colorado, yes. Oh, right. Washington, yes. You guys don't have gambling. So, yeah, so we probably don't have marijuana. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Anyway, this guy, we should at least introduce the players in the top left hand side of the map. <laughs> he's down out of three. It's future. And on the bottom right, Canadian going strong, Masa. You're doing a good job not cheering for your fellow Canuck. I mean, I'm a big fan of Masa. Yeah. And he recently did get his citizenship. So he is indeed a fellow Canuck. I'll cheer for him after he plays in Nation Wars for us. He's never been able to play for Canada in Nation Wars. I'm also a big Future fan. And we don't see, a, see enough of Masa for me to be a super big fan of him. Like he's not in all the tournaments and stuff. Fair enough. My question is, 
Who's giving away these free drugs? Drugs are expensive. That's, that's always been the argument for Halloween, right? Although, like, conservative people are like, you gotta check your kids' candy for drugs, and then the other people are like, you idiot. Giving it to kids. There has but, never been an actual documented cases of drugs or razor blades and candy. It's a myth. I know, but this thing kind of, like, ruins that whole theory. This could be overblown, too, though, or whatever. Like, what, what? maybe, like, someone had, like, a bunch of candy or something, and then they made, like, candy bags, but then they accidentally had, like, one bag of marijuana candy, so, like, a piece or two got put in each bag that contained marijuana. No, the pictures are, like... So, apparently... I don't even know, man. What is this stuff? It's, like, nerd's candy that's more like a, la a taffy. Okay. And it's official, like, it's official looking. This is nerds. It says medicated nerds. Like, it's officially produced. Oh. It's officially produced stuff, like, intended for adults, right? But how did it get in Utah? I mean, we're not checking cars for drugs when they come across but, the border. But, okay, but who's going to bring drugs across the border and then put it... That's the question. The... <laughs> they shouldn't I be able to find who did it. Like 63 bags of candy is a lot of candy. Well, it's okay. So it's bags of food, right? And then okay. each of the bags contained one of these. So it's not like here's a whole ton of nerds. So it's like all, so all the candy is marijuana candy. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Like two kids got hospitalized. That sucks. Oh, that's horrible. I mean, I'm sure they'll be fine. Yeah. That's like the craziest story I have read in a time of crazy story. Did you hear that a Venezuelan warship rammed a German-made Portuguese cruise liner and the warship sank? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought that was the most hilarious thing. No one was even making a big deal of it, though. <laughs> That's because we live in crazy times. We do. I was like, oh my god, the fact that this isn't like the front page of the news everywhere, like that's a that's an act of war or whatever, right? Yeah. And last I heard, Venezuela wasn't ever up to no good. So what brought this on? What's going I, on in Venezuela? I, I don't know what they were trying to do, but usually out on the seas, size matters a lot. It does. You don't ram a cruise liner. It's like it's like that. Have you ever seen that picture of like a car that crumpled over a German bike? Yeah, German engineering at its finest. Turns yeah, out yeah, they yeah. can sink a darn warship with how well they build their ships. Cyclone, oh, Mosses gets caught. So yeah. Uh... Ah, the game's going pretty normal. I'd say so. We're within reasonable distances of each other in every metric. The cruise ship was an icebreaker? What the heck? Well, it had an icebreaking hull, but it wasn't actually an icebreaker, was it? Oh, okay. Just like sometimes we go up north, we gotta break through some ice. Yeah. That makes sense. Or we'd rather not sink when we hit an iceberg. Also good. So we're strapping this thing to the front. Raven moves on in for future. Could toss down an auto turret, maybe delay a CC. Delay a barracks, kill some SCVs. Nothing super significant at this point in the game. Good effort, though. 
like Future has a slight lead in units, just in general. Yeah, he's got a real nice worker count lead here. 45 to 36 is pretty good in a mirror matchup for sure. Both players going for their third orbital commands right now. Nobody's really been stopped from doing what they want to do at this stage. No. This this is Nightshade. The Nightshade effect. Yes. Stim is on the way for future. Why is a ship in a tropical region made to break ice? I mean, Argentina isn't a tropical region, is it? It's it's the Argentina southern part of, is... of South America, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge country ranging north yeah. to south. Part of it's tropical, part of it is basically Antarctica. They got yeah. penguins down there. They do. Although yeah. I fail to recognize any penguin as a penguin unless it's on Antarctica. Wow. You're just a different uh, kind of bird. That's interesting. <laughs> I mean, pretty sure genetically they're penguins. Then they should be in Antarctica. Oh, well, in that case. You're just a wannabe if you're a penguin, but you don't live in Antarctica. Sensor towers on the way for the players. Future built this, or Masa built a sensor tower, and Future was like, that's a good idea. Let's do it. Sensor towers it is. TVT Except, has the most sensor towers per capita uh -huh. of any matchup. Except Moss is flexing right now and is like, I have two. <laughs> he is basically so going, So Future is building a second. If not left-handed. Soon they'll take fifth bases and then they'll build another, probably right here. Maybe right here. Maybe Moss will expand here and build one here. Olympic rings. Oh, here we go. This is a really passive game. It is. TVT can be that way. Australia has penguins. I am aware of that. That's actually where this argument came through. <laughs> Someone was hey. like, there are penguins in Australia. And I was like, no, there isn't. <laughs> what are you talking about? Penguins live in Antarctica. <laughs> they, can't call the himself, they can't just be a bird in Australia and call itself a penguin. <laughs> it's Omicron coming in in this traditional Australian aggression. Stream just died. Come back, my stream. I was watching that. Oh. I don't know why it does that sometimes. Yeah, mine's been going fine this whole time. Yeah, mine was too until just now. Well, weird. Um, Ooh. Nothing too major is happening. Uh, Future's down a few workers. He lost some to that drop. Moss is pressuring. I have seen Happy Feet. But have you seen the much more sad, narrated by Morgan Freeman, March of the Penguins? Who won oh, game back. Innovation versus Patience? Innovation <laughs> versus Patience has been cancelled or postponed. Postponed. All right, here comes a big battle. I think Future's gonna be fine. He got so many siege tanks. Moss is just running in with his own tanks. Shots are getting fired left, right, and center. The Vikings in the sky here for Future are working away on Moss's Vikings, but it looks like the fight will stabilize. And it looks like I hit a nerve with Somnicrom about his not penguins. Told you, Australian aggression. Trying to break this of Masa, and you know what? He did very nicely done. Marines do pretty well against tanks when they have upgrades and the tanks are alone. 
So Somnicron's from Australia? Somnicron is Australian. Better and Australian yet known as West moment. New Zealand. Wow. <laughs> I, this isn't me, Somnicron. It's all laughing games. I'm trying to stop him. <laughs> stop me. You can't stop me. <laughs> I know. All right. Uh, fifth base for Masa. I'm still waiting for that extra sensor tower. Future is now in the sensor tower lead. So by all rights, he's winning the game. That's how that works. It is. Look at this. Future's coming in for a drop. Mazda didn't build the sensor tower yet. Like but the sensor. But the sensor towers, though. It's too late. He's already on the base because there wasn't a sensor tower. I kid you not. Amazing. And the PF finishes, so it's totally locked in here. Mazda's gonna try the and break the game line. Are fighting. Not well enough. Not well enough. What <laughs> <laughs> uh... Canadians were nice. What is happening? Oh, I'm perfectly nice. Mm hmm. Alright, so Future is being pretty aggressive, yet because it's TBT, the supply stays eerily close. And Moss is producing Marines, whereas Future is not. Future is missing a little bit of production here. You gotta get on that, buddy. Queue up all the Marines. Build more Marines. Hey, third sensor tower for Moss. It's a little far back, but we'll, we'll take it. There we go. That's what we like to see. Liberators are gonna die. How many Marines have died so far? 136 17. to 92. Huh. Australians are nice. They have a mouth on them, but they're nice. <laughs> they sure do. This is an epic game? Yes, I apologize for the commentary. <laughs> uh, these marines are really stimmed for future. You don't want to do that, buddy. Those boys barely even have enough energy to stim away. Tanks are getting set on up. This map is giving us great TVTs. Yeah, Nightshade really makes for some good, good matches because it seems to be a pretty fair macro map for every race. It's true. Siege tanks under Liberator fire, but they are shelling away all of the futures. Yeah, that's a lot of marine death noise there. Yeah, it is. Masa losing his tanks is a big, big, big hurt. Big hurt. <laughs> no good. <laughs> oh, it's 86 to 46 army supply, though, for our future right now. This is a fact. It's good number. Right now, he's three, making... three coming in. Yeah, he's making the more marines. Yes. All right. Might just be death push right here. Is it though? Yeah, probably. Maybe. Is it? I don't know. The tank right, count of Masa is a concern. He's just been making marines from this point on. He's got two tanks somewhere. But is two tanks enough? Probably not. With the best micro of all time. Oh, GG, future. Not. He's not dying yet. Not dead yet. I'm hanging it's been on. the pattern today. You get all the way to the brink of elimination and then you win. Mm -hmm. I see Greg Tough threw five dollars and a Matcherino code to the chat to the Matcherino. You guys Matcherino. are awesome supporting the event. I just want to say thank you guys so much. The players appreciate it. I believe we still have a few coupon codes to use. Yeah, it's 50 cents. You can throw directly at these players, improve their prize pool, make them happier mm -hmm. competing in an Africa. And then we get more people to, can, to come over and play again. Nice. Do the code thing, yep. Use all the codes. I used my code. Did you? 
yeah like it it goes a long way with getting players to come out to the events like high profile players being like hmm it's like two hundred dollars but then it's two hundred dollars plus matcherino which is usually like an extra 25 to 50 dollars or sometimes yeah. even more it's great adds up Gonna be on Simulacrum here for our next map. Yes, I will let you say the map name since you're so good at it. Sounds confident, doesn't it? Yep. You gotta love how any how so many people just log on and get all the achievements. Because Blizzard gave those <laughs> packs and it just spams it your chat. I got them again in NA. Well that doesn't make any sense. Oh, I quit because I was in the player spot. Smart. That was a hard aware. nope. I noped right out of that one. Just proxy and win. It's not a big deal. You get him. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, if I did, I'd retire. I'd actually just retire from everything. I'd quit my job. I'd quit StarCraft. <laughs> I'd quit driving. I'd have done it. I'd have beat Masa. Your life has peaked? Yep. No point going on. All right. In the bottom right-hand side of the map, representing Team Alpha X, it's Masa. <laughs> and in the top left, it is Future. I need a drink. I'll be right back. Roy T. Roo. No proxy yet. We'll see if uh, Future is able to bring this back or not. That is the question. Can he? Can he not? Who knows? Doop -de -doop -de -doop. Barracks building in normal places. And neither player is sending out a scouting SCV, which is rough for me personally. Because it means that I don't actually get to just lock on the unit, so I have to actually observe. Do you think Masa likes pizza? Have you ever met another human being who did not like pizza? Dog Tag says, wait, you can rotate the cam? Yes, you can. Only, I, I believe only if you're, I don't think you can do it while you're playing. Maybe you can while you're playing, but no one ever actually does because it takes way too long. You can also get like some, there are also some viewer mods out there, which you can like, you can always rotate the cam as a spectator. I know that, but there are some mods that have been made out there, which you can basically just like view, spin your camera endlessly, zoom in in definite amounts. It's really cool. See Starcraft from a different like perspective, like go down to like the SCV's eye level. It's nuts. The StarCraft engine is actually really powerful. Pineapple on pizza? I mean, I think it definitely has its place. Like a Hawaiian pizza or whatever you want on it. I think Polt does it instead of zooming in to try and find observers. Oh, that would make sense. Good old Polt. We'll see how he does in WCS. I think he'll at least qualify. Mm, maybe a top eight. Maybe top four. We'll see. Yeah, I know you can zoom to try and find observers. I will eat all your pineapple pizzas. Is that a threat or a promise? It's a promise. What did I miss? Um, Reapers and Hellions being made. Cool. Okie dokie. 
Yeah, Simulacrum is a Hearthstone card. You are correct, Copenhagen. That's interesting. What does Simulacrum mean, though? Uh, I feel like copy. we've been over this before. Yeah, an image or a representation of someone or something. I don't know how it applies to the map. Like a substitute or imitation. Does it look of... like another map? Oh, maybe. All right, now this is pretty cool for Moss. He's going to unload the Hellions, then jump up with his Reapers, and it's going to fail awfully. I kind of underestimated the Medivac, but it still didn't go superb. You can't really nice. push up to a Cyclone that has any oh. amount of support. Once mm -hmm. Byun comes back to the scene, all Legacy of the Void champs will be competing at the same time. Nice. All Legacy of the Void world champs. Well, that would make sense. World champs don't really retire. Because what? We had Byun, who was the first one, Seryl, and then Dark. Yeah. Rogue Pretty good. 2, right? Yeah, Rogue Ooh. 2. He won one. He beat Did Sue, I want to say, Dark? at the BlizzCon Finals. Um, yeah, I th Dark won the last BlizzCon. Rogue won the one before that, I think. Then Serral, then Beyond. No, Serral never won a world. Yeah, so, he did. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, he did. He won 2017. Or 28. 28. 18. Yeah. Rogue won 29. Rogue won yeah. the one before that? No, Dark. Didn't Dark, no, Dark won the, won the most one? recent one. Rogue yeah. won before Serral, I think. Because uh... Rogue's got like $900,000 in prize winnings. It's ridiculous. Yeah, he yeah, won yeah. like 20, two, two IEMs? Okay, so 2017, Rogue beat Sue 4 to 2 in the global finals. Yes. Yes. 2017. Okay. Wow, that was a while ago. Yeah. Uh, Banshee is totally wrecking Future's monies. That's a lot of SCDs, Lapin yeah, Games. 15. That's higher than oh, I can but... count. How? This already happened once today. How does it happen again? Um. I couldn't tell ya. The Cyclones show up, but 20 SCDs killed is a the lot of SCDs. The damage has been done. Ooh, one of the Banshees escapes. I mean, there's at least a third base, and Future has his own Banshee, but he doesn't have Cloak for it. Not as good, it turns out. A rather lackluster Banshee. So Social is just going to push on in here. Do you call him Social? Social. <laughs> I like it. Social. I like it, make it making it sound like it's an actual name, though. It was Rogue, oh. then Serral, then Dark. Huh, I'm noticing a trend there. For the what? Blizzard There's no title. trends, no. All no, those are... Pay no attention to the races behind the winners. <laughs> Everything's fine. Yep, everything is perfectly fine. Beyond will return and restore balance. It's fine. It's okay, Terran made a top eight once. He did, actually. Maru oh, won nice. Super Tournament. But then he'll go bomb out of the next tournament. And Maru. Because he's Maru, the inconsistent. It's gotta be mental, right? Like, you can't be this up and down in your performance in anything unless you have mental something's happening. I don't know. I think he just doesn't care, to be honest, sometimes. <laughs> like, he's been a pro gamer so long, he's like, whatever, I'll try this tournament. But whatever, I don't know how you flip that these? switch on and off. How do you flip a switch from, I'm gonna kill everyone, to I don't care? That's insane to me. I don't know. I think it depends whether he, like, wakes up on the right side of the bed. <laughs> Just I mean, takes a quick assessment of his emotional like, state. Hmm. No. <laughs> Do I want to crush nerds today or not? I'm not really feeling it, you know? I think, I think I'll lose fast and go SOS out SOS and... denied us Serral versus Maru, but then Serral also... Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, Maru just loses. The Zergs are more consistent. That's the thing they have. Like Rogue, Dark, and Serral, they've all been very consistent.
the universe denied us Serral versus Mara. I want to make that show match happen. I just need to crowdfund ten thousand dollars, charge five hundred dollars a pop to the other language streamers to broadcast it, then charge five dollar subscriptions to watch it. Easy peasy. You made your money back. You got Serral versus Mara. Uh, this was an attack that did not happen or did not work at all from Masa. It seems like a tall order. The show match or Masa's attack? Show match. It could easily happen. I mean, the longer we go without that particular matchup, you might be right. Like, think about it. $10,000? You need to sell, like... $500 streaming package or streaming rights to like you could probably get like six other language broadcasters so there's three grand um get a sponsor or two you're golden if I had the experience running events I'd definitely do it but I would not do that as my first LAN event probably not a great idea Because I know it would not go perfectly. Do you know how easy it would be to get sponsors right now? Right now? Impossible. Yeah. It would also be hard to get the two of the players in the same country. Unless they Brinkley felt like says... walking. Hey, Cyril, how do you feel about walking? <laughs> <laughs> into walking are you See, Maru is never in form, but then he's also never out of form. You may as well just flip a coin to see whether Maru's going to show up or not. Whereas Serral, he's still pretty consistent. Yeah, Serral is going to be terrifying no matter what. He might not win every time. No. It's scary. His late game Zerg style got nerfed a bit, but yeah. he's really, really good. Well, and the only one who knocked him out last time at BlizzCon was Raynor, so it's yeah. not like... Well, wait, was game... it last BlizzCon he lost... Yeah, to yeah, Rainer. He's lost other tournaments to some other Zergs, though, hasn't he? It's usually Rainer. <laughs> and he lost to Zest? That was yes. something. Adept Printer Go Burr. <laughs> and Sarah <laughs> even knew that that was a stupid loss to Zest. Rocket 81, future is American. I saw a tweet from... from... from Risky. And he was like, Zest is going to win IEM, and no one is going to understand why. Because <laughs> he's not the best Protoss in the world. Nope. And no one under... But then he just goes Adept Printer. And it works. Like, if you can win a tournament doing that, go for it. By the way, Kya Mike with 50 Star Balloons. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't know what balloons mean exactly, but they're I cool. don't know the exact exchange rate. I want to say they're like... 30 Korean won each, which works out to about 30, less than 30 cents or so. But... Don't quote me on that. It's been a while I since I checked. Absolutely I know last not. time it took me a few years to like build up enough to cash out, and it worked out to like 50 bucks or something. Hmm. So Moss is coming in for an attack. The last attack didn't go so hot for him. Oh, that one will if Future accidentally runs all of his marines into siege tanks. That's a big uh, note. Yeah, don't do that. I like the tank drop up here, though. I don't. This, I mean, some SCDs died. 10 equals $1. Yeah, that may be right. I guess it depends how what the actual cut is that the streamer gets, though, too. Right. Alright, Siege Tank's firing away. Bing, bang, boom. The sensor tower will die. Oh, no. So young. 
Uh, Moss is pretty committed out on the map with all these units. Like, it's not that... He's just got tanks over here. The rest of his army is sectioned up. This could, this could be good for future. Yeah, future on the warpath, pushing down towards that planetary mm, fortress again. Tanks getting set on up. Anti-armor missiles going down on both fronts. Future might be able to get in range of this PF, but I doubt he'll make it too much further. Let's get to battle cruiser stage. That's what I'm I mean, for we could I don't think these players are going to take a breath long enough to build the battle cruiser. Hmm. Future potentially going to lose his CC. Masa dropping marines on the tanks. And it's going pretty darn well for Masa cleaning out almost all those tanks. All the while he's got his own siege tanks firing away. He cancelled the CC of Future. So Future is locked on four bases. Ganoi just dropped 50 star balloons. You guys are freaking awesome. Balloons are fun, says Rocket. Balloons Rock are fun. I'm not 100% sure how much they're worth, but I know they are valuable support. You guys Look how the fun they are. That, like, bare thing has a camera. It does. And chances are I'm going to put it into another StarCraft event at some point. I'm pretty content with all the show matches and things that I've done. I've seen all the matches I want to see besides Serral versus Maru. But if there's ever a show match or something I want to do again, that's where, that's where the money will go, probably. Either that or I'll buy Subway. And that'll make me happy. <laughs> These tanks are still here for Masa, by the way. I'm just hanging out. Not just hurting doing their no one. thing. I mean, they were hurting someone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. They just pop away. You're right. You're right. They're a menace. I think both of them had forgotten until that point. A couple of Moss's tanks get caught, though. Um, future, I don't think you can push through here, guy. He's gonna try. Just brute force your way through, and he's actually up on supply by a very significant margin. Um, how did that nope. happen? I don't Remember know. Remember how... Because TVT is black magic. It's almost as bad it as EVT. Oh, it is. You can lose TVT at any point. Yep. You blink and you've lost the TVT, but then you've also you also blink and then you've won the same TVT five seconds later. It makes I no mean, sense. No one understands how it works. But Future wins. GG. Well played by Future. I'm sure there was a yeah. lot going on that we didn't pick up on. There was some damage happening on the other side of the map, but not enough damage for Masa. Mm -hmm. Dang. Check. Use those Matcherino codes, FYI, ladies and gentlemen. That is another great way to support the stream. There are some left. It's like, hey, would you, if you had the option to give someone free money, would you like some? Would you, would you like to give them free money? It's like, yes. sure, I guess. I mean, I'd like free money, but this time we're giving free money to the players. I'd give my friend five bucks if it cost me nothing. Wrong map for for Masa apparently. Playing one that we already picked, but yeah, go use that Matcherino code. It's like, uh, I, I've been listening to an audiobook. It's about uh, a guy doing business in Russia, like during mm. the fall of the Soviet Union. Sounds cool. After the fall, because there was like obviously a lot of business, business opportunities. And he mentioned like a Russian proverb or whatever. It's like, if you had the opportunity to give your, it's like a genie says you will get, you can wish for anything in the world, but your neighbor will get twice as much. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then That's the guy one. says, I wish you poked out one of my eyes. Right. <laughs> so spiteful. It's incredibly spiteful. It's absurdly spiteful, but it, it's yeah. an interesting way of thinking. It is. Oh, what is my account password? That is the question. It's always the question. Hey, we have got... Hey, we've got enough star balloons to cash out. 
Holy smokes. It's a miracle. Yeah. The last time I cashed out was 2018. <laughs> this will get me about 50 bucks or so or something like that. So I think that's what Twitch's payout level is, 50 bucks. I think for Twitch it's 100. I know at least it is. Oh, I tried to get it? my bank linked up, but I couldn't. So I just had to get paid out on PayPal, which mm. has absurd fees, but it's whatever. That's annoying. I see you guys also went through the global portal for the star balloons. You got to wait time for star balloons to be cashed out as well. Mm. So and but they're kind of split up, so it's kind of weird. Like I have two hundred and fifty star balloons that I could cash out, but I can't. But then I have have. Uh, 500, 500 Korean ones that I can cash out, but I can't cash out the global ones. What? It's kind of kind of interesting. And then they also expire, but that it takes five oh. it takes five years. Oh well, I guess if you can't earn enough balloons in five years to cash out, you're probably doing something wrong. I have a dream. <laughs> You have a dream to have them expire? No, I have, a, I have a dream. One day I'll get enough to cash out. Oh, yeah. Future says, put me in. We should probably get him in the... I don't want to play you, Masa. Stop putting Masa me against you. really wants to play you. No, I don't want to. He wants to play a TVP for a quick warm-up. <laughs> no. Oh, I'll max packs the shit out of Masa. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> Let's go. That's I hope it. I hope you like mass charge lots. <laughs> destroy you well apparently the game's starting I guess we got there somehow oh apparently I had uh, some star balloons actually expire oh no it did happen yeah I've been I've, have I been on a Freaka for five years? No, we haven't been doing a Freaka world five years. Oh well, way she goes. I think they might have expired sooner on other things or whatever. Like, there were some that got copied over from the old site. Alright, anyway, the best of seven continues on. Uh, futures making a comeback. Sorry? What was the old site? Hey, look, more boons. Remember uh, Freaka? Before Afrika kind of merged the global and Korean site, it was sort of like a more separate site. Hmm. It, it might have been before you were brought, or before you came on. I think it was. Uh, was it, though? It might not have been. It was a long time ago. It was kind. It was sort of like a more English-oriented site, because it was developed just for the global platform. However, I guess issues came with uh, them kind of running two separate sites with different backends and stuff. For That's my guess. It makes much more sense to run two sites and have uh, translation. Yeah, totally. All right, anyway, in the top right-hand side of the map, it's Alpha X Masa. Uh, he doesn't want to let this one slip away from him. I, it would feel pretty bad to lose the series after going up, as he did. And in the right side here, about the 230 position, it is... Social. Social. Otherwise known as Future. Social we'll justice Future Social. warrior. Yeah. I, I love when pro gamers who are really good at the game have funny, funny ideas. Like, if you're that good... And that everyone who looks at ladder has to look at your username at the top of the charts. I'd pick some things. Like what? I don't know. I'd think of something funny. All right. Support this plan. <laughs> <laughs> Just something ridiculous, like your mom or whatever. It's like, oh, I'm playing on, playing on ladder. Your mom beat me.
Thank you for the star balloons again, Gunoy. I think we're saying that right. I hope so. I'm usually pretty good at the pronunciation. Most times in chat when I'm unsure of a username and say, uh, I think I got that right, they'll usually say you got that right. Nice. Okie dokie, this best of seven continues onward. These guys have really taken a step back. No proxies. I know. What happened to the proxies? I think they picked all the maps you can proxy on first. <laughs> and then they were just like, darn it, we have to macro. How do I do that? How did we let this happen? All right. Nothing major is happening yet. Nope. If there aren't proxies, then TBT kind of just turns out this way for the first bit. Okay. They are giving us good games tonight, Friday night, SC2 fight night. Yeah, we've had some great series so far. Definitely. Some series that didn't look like no. they were going to be good series. I'm going to be honest were. with you guys. Thought they'd be junk. And then they just all got good. Uh, this is a cute push from Masa, bringing the siege tank, getting it set up in Futures Natural. Having a tank pop up in your natural is not a good time. Surprise! Throw him straight up not having a good time. Is what Future says as he has a tank in his natural. Oh, Future wants to keep dropping. He's got a medivac so he can micro his tank and marines. He probably yeah, wants that like raven. It. That's what he wants. He Come sees on. that raven and he says, mmm, delicious. Let me eat that. Yeah, ravens are big, big deals. Oh, they're massive the deals. The difference between having a raven and not having a raven in TVT is probably bigger than having some other units in some other factions. <laughs> okay, that was a horrible statement, but <laughs> it's a big deal. I was saying that, but then I thought about like the difference between having like medivacs and no medivacs, or high templar and no high templar. Pretty brutal. Yeah, pretty brutal. So maybe not that big of a deal, but it's a big deal. Yeah. You don't want to be caught without a raven. You don't. All the cool kids have ravens. Yes, that's so raven, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Man, how long has that show been off the air? I don't know, but it's, it, it's been a hot minute. Yes. The tanks don't siege because these are a rare breed of non-sieging tanks. Liberator is getting some kills. The tanks are getting dropped and microed and dropped and microed. Future is off the charts, or Masa, pardon me, is off the charts with his micro. Then like la -dee da -dee da Microing these tanks in injured medivacs with injured siege tanks. I do what I want. Nice. Masa is ready to win it now, says Rocket. It's feeling it. We'll see if Future can bring this back. He's in a bit of a rough spot. Down on bases, down on units, down on workers. The numbers do not favor him. The numbers don't lie. That's so Raven, January 2003 to 2007. You know, I never even really watched that show. I just remember when I'd be scrolling through the TV listings that it would be there. And I'd be like, huh, all right. Whatever it's a pretty that catchy is. catchy catchphrase, too. That's so Raven. Yeah. It's a great catchphrase. It caught on, you could say. And we're using it here in 2020, Are so... Are we just going to see Future just drop into the main base of Masa? That'd be or so Masa cool. Or Masa drop into the main base of Future? 
Just doom drop it. Just do it. It's TVT. What were they thinking when they gave everyone a direct line to each other's bases via air? I mean, slow zone. It is slow. It is really slow. It's a big deal. It is an interesting concept, kind of creating more space by making slow zones. But it's still a direct line. Masa right now is like, yeet, get me to this natural. Or just, I'll set my tanks up outside it. Good luck getting rid of me. Says, I probably can. Liberator in the main base being a pain too. Yeah, this looks like it could be a slow death here. For our young American Terran. Boss is gonna unload. Auto turrets get dropped out. There's a lot of siege tanks at the back of the natural. This was probably an overcommitment from Boss, I feel. Auto turrets, Marines moving in, they stim. Yeah, this looks really good for future, cleaning this up. He's still down on bases though, so he's gonna have to make something happen soon. And get across the map and get an attack going. He's up on army supply. He's gonna be equal on upgrades. Masa's out on the map with his army here. Oh, this could be disastrous for Masa. <laughs> All right. Damn. 61 to 39 army supply in favor. Game seven. Let's go. A future right now. We're trying to get there. All right, Masa's gonna, or Future's gonna load tanks into Masa's main base. Uh, catches one of Masa's medivacs. Oh, that's no good. Uh, tanks unloading on the high ground might have been an overcommitment from Future. He's getting his own shots from the low ground, but his tanks on the low ground were a little bit too far away. But now the front door is fairly the front undefended. Front door is Masa. undefended. Mm. Future, he's making as many units as he can, crossing the map. He's got a third on the way, so I mean, if he keeps Masa pressured long enough, he could potentially macro out of this. Future elects to pull back. Still up on army supply, though, by quite a large margin. We'll see if he can get and hit Masa somewhere. Even in a best of seven, Terrans aren't dead until they're dead. That is that is the truth. It is the truth. There's not a more volatile matchup than TVT. Future heading towards the third base of Masa. He scanned it, but he's actually pulling back. I mean, the third was actually quite vulnerable. If he could have got there, however, eh, it's kind of choky. But Masa wasn't really sniffing it out or looking for it. Uh, Future wants to get to this location. He's getting his tank set up, but uh, he's a little bit of ahead of himself here, I feel. The tanks are getting good shots off. Masa has his own siege tank so far and away. It'll cost Masa a lot of SCVs to clean this up, but it will be a complete cleanup. Yeah, pushing it away. That tank goes down. The Vikings get picked off except for one. Maybe. Future taps out and Masa takes the series. Wow. Four to two. Hey, Falcon's prediction was correct. Mm -hmm. I win. Well done. It looks like that, uh, it looked like Future could have maybe pulled that back. It was close, but in the end, Masa did play solid enough to win. He won't be leaving empty-handed, though. Yeah, it was an impressive win for Masa there in that final game. Mm -hmm. Sure seemed like Future had the lead, had the bigger arm. Blipped it on him. Yeah, we'll get that lineup coming up here on the channel maybe in a couple weeks. We definitely had to postpone it, but it's going to be a killer lineup for sure. So mm -hmm. be sure to follow both myself and Laughing Games on Twitter for announcements as to when the next one will be featuring which players. That's the best way to get advanced notice of what's going to be showing up here for the next Africa world. Yes, do that. Falcon and I both post things on Twitter. And yeah, do you have anything else to add? No, I think that's it. It was a really fun event. Really great games across the board there. Great series and really good uh, participation, I think, from chat today. Maybe better than average and great view counts, too. So overall, no complaints. Yeah. Just tell your friends about the Africa World events, especially now that everybody's stuck in their house. 
uh, we could get more viewers, I think. Yeah, a really fun event. Thanks so much to everyone for tuning in. And I also saw before we close things out, Michael added $6 to the Match Arena, giving, bringing it to an extra $50 for the players, which is great. A nice little bonus for all the players who came out. And uh, once again, nice. big thanks to all the players for being ready to hop in and play a cup at the last minute. Had mm -hmm. to do some last minute rescheduling. And uh, yeah, thanks so much to everyone for tuning on in. Yeah, thanks everyone. Have a good night. We'll catch you on the next Africa World. Take care of yourself. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.